You are welcome to this brief introduction to the Epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 11 through 28. Most of the material that we shall share with you can be downloaded from our website at hebrews.cura.download. Let's get into it. Since under the first covenant there was no provision of sacrifice for the forgiveness of intentional or high-handed sins, our text explains how that under the new covenant Jesus has provided redemption for those who transgressed under the first covenant. This is also the portion that contains the famous scripture, Just as it is appointed for man once to die, and after that comes judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. This text was originally written sometime before the year 70 A.D. or C.E. in Koine Greek. The text has been very well preserved, although a few minor variants do occur in the ancient documents, as copyists made mistakes or tried to improve the language. As with all ancient manuscripts, New Testament texts were copied by hand, thus occasional scribble errors were made. For example, in verse 17, a few ancient manuscripts read, Not then, metote, instead of not yet, mepote. In verse 19, there are three variants. A few manuscripts insert a definite article, the, before the word commandment, an attempt to improve the language. Some others omit the definite article before the word law, possibly for stylistic reasons, and a few others change the order of calves and goats to goats and calves. In verse 25, one ancient manuscript reads, Holy of Holies, instead of Holy Places. In 26, a few omit the definite article again before the word sin. And in 27, one manuscript inserts the phrase by faith after the verb waiting. For a sound interpretation of any biblical text, we must pay attention to how the author of a text ordered his thoughts and words. One way is through discourse analysis. Dr. Westfall suggests that today's passage fits under point two, consider Jesus as the high priest of our confession, sub point C, let us draw near to God, sub sub point two, Jesus priesthood cleanses us and qualifies us to serve as priests with a further sub-point C, Jesus' death inaugurated the new covenant, removing sins once for all. Let's make our own scribble correction. In an attempt to understand the logic of these verses, they seem to develop the thesis presented in chapter 8, Jesus serves as high priest in the heavenly holy places, from whence these verses draw two inferences. The first introduced by, therefore, Jesus is mediator of the new covenant, with the result that he has redeemed those who were called under the first covenant, who may now receive their promised inheritance. And as an explanation, for a death has occurred as required by custom and by law. With this conclusion, thus the first covenant was concluded with bloody sacrifices. And as our second major inference, we read, Therefore Messiah has purified the heavenly things with better sacrifices. And for this he offers an explanation. For Christ has appeared once in the presence of God on our behalf, bearing a sin offering for many. And a parallel thought, when he emerges from that second tent, he will be seen by those who eagerly await him. This line of argumentation begins to make better sense when we consider the historical background. 
That is, under the first covenant, which some call Old Testament, the high priest of Israel had three main duties. First, daily attendance to the lampstand and to the burning of incense on a golden altar in the holy place of the tabernacle. Secondly, the annual sprinkling of sacrificial blood on the covenant chest in the most holy place and upon the incense altar in the holy place on behalf of the nation's sins of ignorance. And thirdly, occasional sprinkling the incense altar with blood from sin offerings on behalf of groups and individuals whose sins of ignorance had been discovered. In particular, the books of Leviticus chapter 4 and of Numbers chapter 15 describe this latter process. When someone or a group commits a sin in ignorance and then repents, secondly, they bring a sacrificial animal called sin, translated in English as sin offering, to a priest who slays the animal, taking its blood. A high priest then bears the blood into the holy place where he sprinkles it upon the incense altar or annually into the most holy place where he sprinkles it on the covenant chest. And fourthly then, the priest emerges from the holy place declaring the sinner is forgiven. Thus, the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verses 15 through 28 compares the work of Jesus to that of the high priest in this way. 1. All humans have committed both willful sins and sins of ignorance for which many repent. Jesus has died once for all as a sacrifice to God to remove human sins for God has made him to be sin for us. Thirdly, Jesus has ascended into heaven where he has entered into the real holy places, appearing in the presence of God on our behalf. Fourthly, we who remain on earth eagerly wait for him to return to earth where we shall see him declare our eternal salvation. Since our text was composed in Greek, we can make an observation from standard Greek grammar. Chapter 9, verse 15 begins literally with the words, and because of this, or possibly that. The conjunction and relates this section to the previous section, and the logical phrase, because of this or that, relates either to the previous section or to the next clause. This ambiguity in language requires that interpreters and translators, as well as teachers, consider several possible meanings. Thus, 9.15 may be taken to mean either a, and because Christ has secured eternal redemption, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Or possibly, and Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, and because of this, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now, if your faith community allows you to employ only one English or other translation, then follow that one. As you guide others to study and learn from this passage, you may wish to provide topics and queries for discussion. For example, after verse 15, you may ask participants to compare the first and the new covenants from this verse. You may download recommended responses to these queries from the download site. After verses 16 and 17, you may wish to discuss how does a human covenant, that is, a will and testament, illustrate what Jesus accomplished in the New Covenant. After verses 18 through 20, discuss together how do Moses' actions illustrate what Jesus accomplished in the New Covenant. After verses 21 through 23, these two queries. 
For what purpose did Moses sprinkle the tent and its furniture with blood? And secondly, how did Moses' actions illustrate what Jesus would do in heaven itself? After verses 24 through 26, you may discuss what are two places where Jesus has appeared? When did he do so? And for what purpose? And after the final two verses, discuss in what ways in what ways does our high priest Jesus deal with the sinful condition of us human beings? Teaching or preaching through this text, it could be helpful to point out these historic Christian doctrines that are derived from this epistle. For example, the present mediatorial work of Christ, that is, what he is currently doing in heaven on our behalf. Especially his past redemptive sacrifice, the basis of all forgiveness and friendship with God. And lastly, his future appearance to those who await his return. Thus, your assignments for this week is to read through Hebrews 9, 15 through 28 once a day from different translations. As you do so, jot down notes and queries that you want to discuss in your Bible study group. We recommend a project. Perhaps you might choose one of the following or another one that interests you more. You could chart or diagram the first covenant process of securing forgiveness of non-intended sins by bearing a sin or sin offering to a priest. Or chart or diagram the new covenant process of securing forgiveness of all sins by Christ becoming a sin offering as our high priest. If you do so, please prepare a one-page summary of your project and share it with your Bible study group. God himself will richly bless you as you study this passage, as you obey its commands, and as you teach others to do so.